were labeled by their diagnosis and saw themselves that way. When individuals were asked to tell their stories, what frequently we heard were stories of past abuse, stories that often had been covered up by overprescribing of medications, or because no one had ever really asked or listened before. The other cutting edge aspect of the Emanuel House program was that we utilized group therapy as a therapeutic approach. There was very little group work happening at that time. Most social workers and other therapists were engaged in individual counseling, often coming from a place of trying to fix people. I guess I was a good fit for the position of social worker at Emanuel House at that time, primarily because I'd learned a valuable lesson from a training seminar that I attended with Dr. Larry Shulman when I was a probation officer in Labrador. An important lesson that I will share with you now. So what was this lesson? Now listen carefully, social workers, and all of you other graduates. So what is this important lesson you ask? You cannot fix anyone. Whew, what a weight that lifted off my shoulders. <laughs> Because really, what kind of responsibility and pressure is that to carry, especially as a new social worker? Obviously, as social workers, we learn many interviewing techniques and skills that assist individuals to recognize the source of their pain. We can help them identify the methods they've been utilizing to cope with that pain. Often negative ones, such as substance abuse, self-harm, or even violence. We can help them acknowledge that and learn more healthy ways to deal with their issues. And we can be a pivotal part of helping them along the journey. But we cannot fix them. We should not judge them. And we do not have to feel like we failed if they continue to make choices that create problems for themselves. We can only point out what the consequences of that behavior will be. You might go to jail. You may lose your children. It's their choice to make, and that may be the only choice they can make at that time. I also learned that people hear that message better from people who have been there. The power of groups and peer support is amazing. Our job as social workers in that milieu is to ensure that the process is safe and respectful. I also learned that individuals who have experienced severe trauma have an extra sense of equality. They're hypervigilant. They have to be to have survived in some of the chaotic environments they grew up in. So I learned pretty fast to be real with people. If you don't know something, say so. If you don't like someone, don't work with them. I also learned that people can only hear a tough message from someone who they believe truly cares about them. Think about that in your whole, own life. Who can tell you the bad, tough stuff? People know when you're not being real or if you don't like them, especially hypervigilant people with histories of trauma. So there I was, barreling along, doing good social work, walking with people, feeling like I was doing the important clinical work. And Phyllis resigned, and I had to decide whether I would seek the executive director position, which I have to tell you, I saw as boring. Administration, budgets, all that stuff. But if I didn't accept the positions, I had to work for someone else. And I knew there weren't many Phyllis's out there. Luckily for me, at that time, I had to make the decision of that, that decision. I was booked to attend a week-long organizational transformation workshop that was focused on helping organizations move from charity and or rehabilitation programming to a radical renewal approach it was focused was to train leaders of organizations to learn to transform systems that contribute to poverty, oppression, and inequality. That week changed my life. I came away from that event with an understanding that if we did not try to change the systems that cause people to come in our doors, then often all we are doing is helping people stay comfortable in their misery this became very clear to me shortly after I accepted the executive director position at Emanuel House. At that time, a number of the residents of the house had very challenging, complex mental health needs. They did well in the four-month program, and then they would leave. Things would fall apart, and they wanted to come back. 
Some staff were very frustrated by this. I'm not talking about minor problems. It was pretty complex. But they said, what was wrong with these people? They'd done the program. Aha, they're <coughs> resistant to treatment. As a result of having attended the Organizational Transformation event, I have learned to look at this issue differently. What were people experiencing while in the Emanuel House program that was not available to them in the community? So we asked them, novel. They told us safety, support, food, shelter, a home, a job, a friend. At that point in time, there was no supportive housing. There was a very high rate of unemployment, so there were no opportunities for work for mental health consumers, especially those with complex issues. Most lived in isolation. The Waterford Hospital or prison was often preferable to being alone, hungry, or living in squalor. So what were we to do? We could accept that this was the way things were, continue to provide counseling to help people deal with their issues, and then send them back to the same circumstances that they were in when they came to us, and wonder why they failed. I believed it was our responsibility to provide the leadership needed to change those circumstances, to advocate for the resources and the social policy changes that would promote the development of decent, affordable, supportive housing, for opportunities for real work, and for opportunities for persons to be included in a meaningful way in their community. Today, Stella Circles owns and operates 18 buildings that provide 100 units of supportive housing. We own and operate a number of social enterprises, as you've heard, including the Hungry Heart Cafe, that provides real jobs and training to many of our participants. And we've developed community building activities, such as the Inclusion Choir, that provide persons the opportunity to utilize their gifts and talents in a creative, meaningful way. I retired from my position as Executive Director of Stella Circle on March 31st of this year. It has been an incredible journey, one that I would not have missed for the world. There were many events and celebrations for me, the staff at Bill watching know that they're sick of it. But the most meaningful was the celebration when former participants told me what a difference Stella Circle has made in their lives. Their stories of transformation were truly inspiring and the most important gift to me in my leave taking. So let me say to you, believe in every person's ability to grow and develop. Look for the hidden gifts, even if they're really well hidden. Be real with people, be willing to admit you were wrong, and to change your decision when you're given new information. <coughs> Speak out about injustice, advocate for change, and remember Maslow's hierarchy of needs. People need food and shelter before they can engage in counseling. Advocating for and providing those services is more than good social work practice. It is your responsibility as a social worker and or as a citizen to help all persons reach their potential and to make our community a place when everyone feels included. Good luck to you all as you embark on this new part of your life journey. Wherever you go, whether you're a social worker, a business person, a musician, you will face injustice and oppression. Use your many gifts and talents to help make the world a more equitable place. You will be richer for having tried to bring about change. Just look at me. Who knew when I started my journey where this would lead? Anything really is possible. You just really got to believe. So in closing, I'd like to give you one more piece of advice that wasn't that I passed in. Um, I've spoken to you primarily about your professional life, though I do believe the personal and the professional are intertwined. But I would also like to impress upon you the importance of nurturing and valuing for them. Excuse me. Say that one again. 
of nurturing and valuing your family and friends. Their support will sustain you through the hard times. Never put work commitments ahead of those relationships. I have been blessed to have a wonderful support network of family and friends. And I want to thank all, many of them are here. But today, I especially want to honor and acknowledge my sister Janice Wells, who's watching this, I hope, in the Health Sciences Center and dealing with a serious illness. Jan claims she taught me everything I know. So I'd like to end by saying, Jab, Jan, I think you had a job well done. Thank you very much.